All right, bruh fans, episode 9, entitled 24 Hours. Score is going to be a bit low. Um, Just finished watching the episode, so before going any further into the review, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new, and hit the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out whenever I post new content, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show you like it. This episode was yet another example of, you know what? Maybe it's better to watch this show in a bin session as opposed to once a week. And this was yet another episode where it's like, dang it, Tyler Perry. I wanted to like it a lot, but it suffered from the dreaded, hey, let's drag out this joke longer than you should. And let's do it for the sake of filling in the 21 minute time slot. Unfortunately, I'm going to give this episode probably, I think, the lowest score I've ever given an episode of Bruh. And I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. Yeah, it, it hurts to say that. But we pretty much picked up where he left off. Leon did not fire his gun, but he did pull it out as a scare tactic. I will give points to Mike for standing his ground while Bill and Tom were... I'm not going to sit up here and act like I would have been big and bold in that situation. I wouldn't even went down there. Sorry, not sorry. But, I mean, Bill was pretty much acting like a, you know, a B. I, I will admit, though, now I'm kind of jumping ahead in the review, but when they were on their way back from Leon's place, I did like the fact that Tom and, well, mainly Mike were picking fun at Bill for being scared because if you go back to last week, well, technically the week before last, well, episode eight, you know, you had Bill just running his mouth about the short jokes and, you know, um, Mike being, I mean, yeah, Mike being in his feelings about Pamela. So I did like how we kind of got a reversal of the teasing in this episode. But in any case, uh, Mike pretty much says, you know what? I'm a lawyer. And then Leon's like, you're a tax lawyer. So I guess that's confirmation that while Mike and Andy know each other from, you know, their work in law, obviously she, um, Andy's like, we have the same boss. So pretty much the same law firm. Look, I'm not really an expert in this stuff. I did go to law school for three days. What, at Liberty, they had a program where you can go for like three days. I thought it was pretty cool. But um, I guess when you're in a law firm, there are different divisions of it where you have tax lawyers, divorce lawyers. Um, I, I guess you could say like maybe criminal lawyers, that kind of thing. So it definitely seems obvious that Mike and Andy work in different branches of the lawyer tree, so to speak. But given the fact that Mike talks to the IRS on a daily basis, he pretty much threatens Leon like, hey, you want to take this 500000 and walk away? Or, you know, I want to pretty much, in a professional manner, snitch and you'll be in jail. So, while before this, you know, Tom pretty much does speak up. And, you know, one of those people who, they, when, I, I know people, my dad's like this, when he gets frustrated, he'll cuss and it won't even make sense. It's like, like you're using curse words that really don't form well together in the same sentence. And then Tom, or, you know, the person who doesn't curse a lot. And when he does, it's like very awkward. That was Tom in this moment where, um, what do you call him, like a, a B-ass punk or something like that. Because as someone who works in the hospital, you know, um, seeing someone like Leon who's throwing around drugs on the street and these kids take some bad stuff and he has to treat them. So Tom kind of stood up for himself in front of Leon while Bill, like his voice cracking up and everything. is like, man, what you got to call names for? What, what you got to do? Like, <laughs> tough enough for your boys, nigga. It's like. Uh, okay, Mike. Well, okay, Mike. And they get up out of there. So, uh, Leon even makes a phone call saying, hey, come back tomorrow with 10% uh, interest. And Mike didn't take the call, but he did listen to the voicemail. Okay, then we go over to Laura and Alice at uh, A&J Sandwiches. Uh, you know, Laura's just mopping the floor. Alice is still going on about how she's mad about John. Al I mean, Laura brings up the fact that she knows about the drug money and how John took it, and she's upset that, you know, there's word about her son in the streets. Um, the guys show up. Alice runs off it before they can even really say exactly what was going on with John. And that pretty much leads to, you know, one of the first big, okay, we're dragging out time for the episode because this goes on for several minutes, even off screen. Uh, at level 28, it looks like John is filling out some paperwork. Uh, Charlie, the contractor, comes in. And John actually kind of recognized her, I believe. And uh, she mentions that the building is NHR, National Historic Registry. It's like, ooh, 
what's that? And we really don't go back to that scene. So I'm like, too bad we couldn't have gotten maybe like another 90 seconds or so between Charlie and John, but we can have like five minutes of Miss Alice running around screaming. Hmm. Okay, so Laura flirts with Mike as she does with every guy who walks into the restaurant. And apparently she heard about Mike's reputation from Pam, what, loving sex, being a womanizer. And Mike is naturally pissed off because, you know, oh, you talk, oh, she talking about me. And then she, t <laughs> and then he tells Tom that I'm going to sue her. And I'm like, what? I mean, can you even do that? I guess that's what deformation of character. Slandering. You see those three days of law school paid off. But um, no, basically um, he's in his feelings. And I'm just like. Well, I mean, women talk. That's how it is. And if they ain't talking, what what Laura said, uh, she and Pam go to the same waxer. So get out your feelings, Mike. All right. So pretty much um, Alice finally calms down. They tell Alice what they did for John in regards to the $500,000 with Leon. She's like, no, no, no. First of all, John's going to hear about this. And secondly, I want him to do this for himself. And then they're like, no, nah, he's not going to do that. And to be honest... He really can't because, I mean, he took not only did he take the money, but he's already spent the money. So, I mean, there's nothing he could do. But they explained to Miss Alice what, you know, John did for Mike taking the fall because Mike was the one that got the dean's daughter drunk. And the important part here is we found out the dean's daughter is white. So, no, it is not the chief. Valerie or anyone like that whoever the um, Dean's daughter is was white so I think we might actually see this person at some point during the season I just got a feeling like we're getting more breadcrumbs for each episode and it might lead to her making a return at some point I don't know when exactly or how but I mean it goes back to how I don't think we're going to see KJ Smith aka Andy on the series again but maybe we'll see Mike at his job and like we already established Mike is a tax lawyer and we know Andy works um as more so of a divorce lawyer so I can imagine like let's say Mike is at the office at some time and he just so happens to be walking down the hallway or something like that and um he catches a glimpse of the dean's daughter maybe she um uh, maybe she is getting a divorce or what if she needs like uh, a criminal lawyer or something like that or an attorney because she is filing sexual harassment against someone. And then maybe that makes Mike think about how he took advantage of her in that situation. But that possibly led her down a dark road. Who knows? But to be fair, you know, I think Tom or um, I think it was a bill that mentioned she didn't say you sexually abused her. She said she was drugged. So, I don't know. But other than that, yeah, Miss Alice freaks out again. And that's the episode. So, that's why I gave it a 2 out of 10. I was thinking about, why, you know, just binging the episodes. You know, I believe 10, 11, 12. Assuming we get a mid-season finale break, we only have three episodes left. But, you know, I, I may, maybe when the show comes back, I'll do, um, you know, just a binge session. Or I'll do reviews while I'm reviewing three episodes at once. Because for right now, like... The episodes aren't going to be scored super high because if this episode is an indication, not much is going to happen per episode because, you know, you're just taking the jokes and you're running with them for too long versus maybe 30 or 40 seconds of dialogue between characters that will actually make things relevant. Like, again, I understand, like, Charlotte was introduced in this episode and it's to make us watch next week to see what John learns about level 28, but... I don't think an extra couple of minutes of those two just talking would have been a bad thing. It wasn't about jokes or sexual innuendos. It was just it would just be these two characters talking because, well, how how long has John been sitting at level 28 since what, like episode five and it's episode nine? Oh, well, but with that being said, let me know your thoughts on the episode in the comment section below. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description. Make sure if you haven't done so already, you know, check me out on um, this channel by hitting subscribe. As I mentioned before, you can donate to the channel if you would like on PayPal or Cash App or join Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next video.